What's up today, you guys? We are reading chapter 16 and 17 in the book of uh, John here. And look at all the snow. Look at this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful snow. The snow is melting. It was really snowing really badly yesterday. So we're going to be reading here chapter 16 and 17 in the book of John. No. Oh. And we'll start with the prayer in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. God, please help us to enjoy your word, truth, and life. In your name we pray. Amen. Chapter 16. I have told you this so that you may not fall away. They will expel you from the synagogues. In fact, the hour is coming when everyone who kills you will think he is offering worship to God. They will do this because they have not known either the Father or me. I have told you this so that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you. Jesus' departure coming of the advocate. <sighs> it's getting cold. <laughs> ah. Oh, man. Oh, man, the snow. Let's get inside for the warmth. All right. <laughs> I probably should have been wearing more than just one long sleeve shirt, but that's okay. All right, chapter 16. We are on verse 4. Jesus' departure coming of the advocate. <clears throat> I did not tell you this from the beginning, because I was with you, but now I am going to the one who sent me. And not one of you asks me, where are you going? But because I told you this, grief has filled your hearts. But I tell you the truth, it, the truth, it is better for you that I go, for if I do not go, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world in regard to sin and righteousness and condemnation. Sin because they do not believe in me. Righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will no longer see me. Condemnation because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because, I, because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you a little while and you will no longer see it, see me. And again, a little while later, and you will see me. So some of this, some of his disciples said to one another, what does this mean that he is saying to us a little while and you will not see me. And again, a little while and you will see me. And because I am going to the father. So they said, what is this little while of which he speaks? We do not know what he means. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him. So he said to them, Are you discussing with one another what I said? A little while with one another what I said? A little while and you will not see me. And again, a little while and you will see me. Amen, amen, I say to you. You will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will become joy. When a woman is in labor, she is in anguish because her hour has arrived. But when she has given birth to a child, she no longer remembers the pain because of her joy that the child has been born into the world. So you all, so you also are now in anguish, but I will see you again and your hearts will rejoice. And no one will take your joy away from me. Uh, away, no one will take your joy away from you. On that day, you will not question me about anything. Amen, amen, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now, you have not asked anything in my name. Eh, ask and you will receive so that your joy may be completed. I have told you this in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures, but I will tell you clearly about the Father. On that day, you will ask in my name and I do not tell you you what I will ask the Father for you. 
For the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have come to believe that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. His disciples said, Now you are talking plainly and not in any figure of speech. Now we realize that you know everything and that you do not need to have anyone question you. Because of this, we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you believe now? Behold, the hour is coming and has arrived when each of you will be scattered to his own home and you will leave me alone. But I am not alone because the Father is with me. I have told you this so that you might have peace in me. In the world you will have trouble, but take courage. I have conquered the world. Chapter 17, the prayer of Jesus. When Jesus had said this, he raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your son so that your son may glorify you, just as you gave him authority over all people, so that he may give eternal life to all you gave him. Now this is eternal life that they should know you, the only true God, and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. I glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work that you gave me to do. Now glorify me, Father, with you, with the glory that I had with you before the world began. I revealed your name to those whom you gave me out of the world. They belong to you, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you gave me is from you. Because the words you gave me, I have given to them. And they accepted them and truly understood that I came from you and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for the one for the ones you have given me. Because they are yours and every and everything of mine is yours and everything of yours is mine. And I have been glorified in them. And now I will no longer be in the world, but they are in the world while I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name that you have given me so that, so that they may be one just as we are. When I was with them, I protected them in your name that you gave me and I guarded them. And none of them was lost except the son of destruction, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you. I speak this in the world so that they may share my joy completely. I gave them your word and the world hated them because they do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. Consecrate them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I sent them into the world. And I consecrate myself for them, so that they also may be consecrated in truth. I pray not only for them, but also for those who will believe in me through their, wor through their word, so that they may all be one. As you, the, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you that they also may be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me and I have given them the glory you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be brought to perfection as one, and the wor that the world may know that you sent me and that you loved them even as you love me, even as you loved me. Father, they are your gift to me, I wish that where I am, I, where I am, they also may be with me, that they may be, that they may see the glory, that they may see my glory that you gave me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world also does not know you, but I know you, and they know that you sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will make it known, that the love with which you loved me may be in them and I in them. Chapter 18, Jesus arrested will begin tomorrow. And with that, we'll close the prayer in the name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. God, thank you for this day. In your name we pray. Amen. See you guys tomorrow. Peace out.